Hey, it's Megan from Hipsitch Academy, and we have a class coming up, a Zoom class that you can take from anywhere in the world on Thursday, September 23rd, and Thursday, September 30th. It's two two-hour classes back-to-back, -back, a week apart, and we're going to make the Lupin jacket from Deer and Doe Patterns. So, in the class, you're gonna learn how to make it. Rachel is going to show up and be your teacher as if you were here in the studio with us, but you can be sewing from anywhere, right? But you need to come to the class with your pattern put together, your pattern pieces cut out, and then your fabrics cut out. And I know this can be really intimidating for some people. So I'm making this video so we can show you how to do that before the class so you are ready to go. Let's get started. This is the Deer and Doe Lupin Jacket pattern. And the first thing I want you to do when you print this out is just print the first page. Make sure your printer settings are printing it to be either 100% or sometimes I do 99%. Just because sometimes it shrinks, shrinks it down to fit on the page a little easier. Anyway, you want it as close to 100% as possible. Print the first page, check, that this square on the first page measures two inches. So grab your ruler, just print that first page, grab your ruler, and make sure that you've got the scale correct. This will allow you to print the correct size when you're printing your pattern. This Lupin jacket is miraculously, I think only 24 pages long, and that's nothing in the world of printing patterns. So once you know you've got the scale correct, it's two inch box on the first page, print the rest of the pages. The next thing I want you to do is print out the instructions. They're only like, I don't know, 12 pages long or something. And on the second page of the instructions, there's the pattern assembly layout. This is gonna be your guide to put the pattern together, okay? So look at this and you'll see right away there's five pages of the pattern across and five pages down, except for the last row only has four pages. So yeah, that's 24 pages. This is the order. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. That's your first row. You're taping that together, okay? So that's this. I'm gonna take my first row, A1 through A5. And I'm going to grab some scissors, uh, which I don't have handy, so let me grab those. First step, A1 through A5. I'm gonna first cut off the bottom bar of extra. And yes, I'm cutting five at a time, so it's not perfectly straight. It's okay, I promise. And then I'm gonna cut the right side off. I am not cutting the left side, and I'm not cutting the top, because you need something to overlap, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So, if I move this away, we've got A1 and A2. They're gonna go together, and A2 still has this little lip that I can tape A1 to. I've got my scotch tape is handy. I'm not gonna go nuts with tape. I'm gonna use one little piece just to put it together to start. I've got A3, A3 goes under A1, and you'll see that this first pattern piece called the back yoke has kind of puzzle pieced together. See the lines of the pattern, they line up. It's kind of like a little puzzle. I've got A4, you guessed it. This is gonna go here, one tape, A5, 
Make sure your lines line up. And there you go. You've got your first row of the looping pattern put together. Yes, there's not a lot of tape on here. We'll worry about that in a second. Row two is the Bs. I'm going to do B1 through B5. Grab my five sheets, cutting the right side off, cutting the bottom off, getting rid of the garbage, and don't worry about the first row, okay? Just put this second row together. B1, B2, tape. B2, B3. That one didn't line up great, but I'm not going to worry about it because it's okay. If this is your first time putting a pattern together like this, don't worry about it. And let me just say, if you don't want to put your patterns together, that's okay too because most companies you can order the pattern and have the printed one mailed to you. So as long as you build in enough time where you order it, you hit send, you or you hit purchase, and you have it sent to your house before the class, then you don't have to do all this. You can also print it at a copy, uh, copy shop. So if you have like a Kinko's or FedEx near you, you can take the file and actually have them print it for you. You're gonna incur an extra cost to do that. Um, so just keep that in mind. So if this taping thing is not your thing, that's totally fine. Those are some options. There are your five rows that we're gonna to tape together now. Um, you've got your A, B, C, D, and E. So I'm gonna take A and B, line them up. We cut the bottom off of A, so then that sh should go right on top of B. And anywhere there's a pattern piece that needs to go together, stick a little bit of tape. You can go nuts with the tape later, I'm just trying to conserve tape right now. And I'm going to grab my C row. I'm going to slide that under my very uneven B row. But it doesn't matter it's cut uneven because you're lining up the lines on the pattern pieces. So I can see underneath and I can line it up where it needs to go. Perfect. And then here's my back piece that needs to kind of come up a little bit so it can the lines can stay together get my D row sliding under my C Okay, so now that you've got everything taped together, you've got your five rows, I actually ended up cutting it just below the sleeve so I could put everything in front of me. I added some tape so everything was a little bit better uh, together and not kind of falling apart. Now it's time to cut the pattern pieces out of the paper but you first need to figure out what size you are so take the instruction sheet that looks like this measurements whoops measurements and supplies 
in the instructions and you're gonna take your bust, waist, and hip measurement. Wherever you kind of fall in between, maybe you're between two sizes, just make the larger size. We all get like really focused on, but I'm a size 12, it old navy, why am I 16 in sewing patterns? It makes no difference. It's just the, the system that the pattern company uses. So figure out where you are, and then we're gonna cut out the size that you are. So for me, it's super easy. I'm gonna follow the outside line almost everywhere, but keep in mind sometimes the largest size can be not the outermost line. So you're cutting it and you're keeping the line that is your size in your sights the entire time. Wherever there is no size difference, just cut the solid line. So for me, I'm cutting a line that is two dashes and one dot. We've got to cut the fabric now. So I've grabbed some wool, some purple wool that I'm going to use for the outside. And then I'm going to use something thinner and probably a little bit shiny and slick for the lining. We're going to cut this one out, the main fabric for the jacket first. So you've got to find the cutting layout uh, page here. And Right at the bottom, it's showing you which pieces, which numbered pieces you're gonna cut. Now, if your fabric is 55 or 60 inches wide, your alignment is the top. If your fabric is 45 inches wide, you're gonna use a bit more fabric because it's not as wide and the alignment is with the bottom. I'm using, I think, 55 inch wide fabric so I'm gonna go with that top alignment and I'm looking at it right now and I need pieces one two three four five seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so I've stacked all those pieces in one pile and then the ones that I'm doing lining with I've stacked in another pile so on the second page you can see all the pieces you have to cut a lining of and that's only two four six and eleven um 
okay? So I'm gonna start with the main fabric. That's the majority of the cutting that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna lay that out. When the fabric comes off of the bolt, it's doubled, right? It's folded. So when you buy it at the fabric store, they're gonna unroll it like this. They're gonna cut it out. So I'm just gonna leave mine folded. I like to start with my big pieces first. So 11 is my biggest piece. I'm going to find a spot where I can put that. It says very clearly on here, cut to main fabric, cut to lining. So I'm just starting with the main fabric. If I put it here, I'll get two because my fabric is doubled. Let's see, piece seven is also a big piece. And this one's a little weird because you need four of these. It's doubled. So we need four of these pieces. So what I'm gonna do is probably put it here, cut it, and then put it over here and cut it again. So I have four total. So I'm gonna put that there. Know that I can't put anything here because I'm gonna cut it again. And now I've got this bottom back piece. Notice this arrow, right? This is piece four. It needs to be on the fold. So as I'm laying this out, I'm realizing, mm, why don't I move the sleeve over that doesn't need to be on the fold, away from the side with the fold, and put my bottom back piece along the fold. Now look here. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm gonna try and make this angle a little bit better. You can see that I've got this on the fold, now this is unfitting. What about if we did this? Switch around the direction, make sure we're still doubled over there, pretty much. And then if you need to kind of give yourself a little more room, you can move that down. So now I've got two of these. I've got this piece four on the fold. I've still got room to cut one of these here. I'm gonna grab piece three and piece 10 because they both need to be on the fold. This one is cut two on the fold. So I'm gonna put one there right on the fold. I'm gonna move that up. Keeping in mind I need to cut this one twice. And then I also need to cut this one on the fold a second time. So I'll probably move it down here. Cut, no, we don't need that one. Here's piece 10, like I said, cut one on the fold. I'll stick that one here on the fold. And what else, piece two is also on here. We need two of these. Cut two main fabric, cut two lining. So I think I'm gonna just stick it there for right now. I have an eight. I need four of those. I need two of those. So you can see it's all pretty like self-explanatory. You don't have to do exactly how they've lined it up here. You can kind of play around and before you cut anything, move things around so you're not wasting space okay and don't stress if like you don't get everything cut out before the class like usually we kind of check in at the beginning of class and say how did everybody do you know if you're still cutting you can kind of finish some things up or if you had a question about something don't hesitate to email me um we're here to help you get through this and make it as easy as possible